within the laboratory and our chemical horrors and fun, you find plenty of experiments to entertain yourself with. It is the hour of Professor Putricide. Health pull, damage, swing average, hitbox. Putricide starts off next to a lab table. Your off tank or player of choice can click this table and begin a four second transition into becoming a mutated abomination. While in this state, they will pulsate a mild amount of damage to everyone in the raid, but they require a set of abilities that will help out during the encounter. They will also do a significant amount of damage if handled properly. 10 seconds in, he will cast an ability called Unbound Plague. The boss will recast Unbound Plague at intervals of just over a minute. This functions specifically as follows. Every 0.5 seconds, the plague will attempt to make a jump to the closest person within three yards. Upon making that jump, it leaves behind two debuffs, one seen, one unseen. Plague Sickness, a stackable debuff that increases the damage the plague does to that player, and Plague Bounce Protection preventing that player from getting the plague again for five seconds. This prevents a feedback loop in small groups. The first tick will do its base damage. Each tick will increase in damage by 25% multiplicatively. So it will repeat indefinitely until it is passed off, or if the person dies. If the person dies with the debuff, the debuff goes away until the boss recasts it a minute after he has cast the first one. Okay, so you, be, uh, all right. You have like three ways to deal with this. Pass it off between five to six people at 10 to 12 stacks. Initially, that's not going to happen, but hey, you can share with like four people when it's finally out of the group. Option two, yellow it into either the melee group or the range group. Yes, people are gonna get very high stacks of plague sickness, but if they're consecutively passing it back to back, they'll only take the first tick by the time it passes, and only some of the time. This is why it's called the YOLO strat. Because the moment one of you bastards gets knocked away cause the slime happens, and you're out there on your own, I... Uh, you're dead. Option three, control your destiny. Hand that plague off to your magnificent bastard with a soul stone, and have them stand away from people, and just die. Plague's on. Res, good. Those are your three options. The boss cannot cast this ability during his transition. If it fell off by the time he's tinkering at his table, you're in the clear until he's done. Uh, slime pulls. 12 seconds into the fight, he will cast this onto two random players. He will repeat this every 30 seconds outside of transition. They will start six yards radius in size. If left alone for over the course of a minute, they will grow to be 20 yards in radius. About a yard every four seconds. Your abomination player can slurp up this slurm for energy. They consume about two yards of that radius with every usage. Each consumption grants them four energy. This is off the GCD of the mutated slash. They can spam both in tandem as needed. Depending on your approach, it might be a good idea to leave the first two up until the second two spawn, leaving just a sliver of them to grow and ready to be consumed as the second two spawn. The goal here being having 90 energy before transition hits to use two regurgitated ooze abilities for 45 each. Revitalize does work on the A-bomb, Abuse that as you will. About 28 seconds in, and every 38 seconds after outside transitions, he will cast Unstable Experiment. This will summon an ooze into the fight. Every odd cast will be a green, every even cast will be an orange. The RP of it showering into the fight. Three seconds of it idle doing nothing, and three seconds ramping a cast. The first one, Green Ooze, will cast a channel called Adhesion. This roots his target in place. He then proceeds to move to make contact with him. When he does, ooze eruption occurs. This does a disgusting amount of damage split among everyone involved in the explosion equally, knocking them back 26 yards relative to the degree they are from the center of the explosion. 1.2 seconds of airtime. The ooze then begins to immediately recast adhesion and repeats until death. This channel can be cheesed with three brands of cheese. So you get that mild cheddar with the demonic teleports and the blinks. Mages and warlocks can displace themselves, causing the kite to go a little bit longer. Be careful with this, as you do run the risk of killing yourself, or others. And then you got that provolone. Hunters and rogues, right before impact, can cast Feign Death or Vanish and cause it to immediately recast, ignoring the explosion aspect outright, momentarily. And there's that good shit, that mozzarella. Paladins can cast Divine Shield. This causes the green ooze to go, what the hell? And just start spastically looking about what it's supposed to be doing. Just staring at random people, predating like back the way it came. And then when the Defined Shield wears off, it finally goes back to what it was doing. This gives you ample amount of time to kill this thing before it does anything significant. I believe this also works with Ice Block, but I cannot 100% confirm. So someone's gonna have to 
hit me with that. For every non-transition green ooze, it is ideal to have your melee up in its face with their backs toward the table. For every transitional green ooze, it is ideal to have everyone at a stacked location baiting it to come there. It having a significant amount of travel time means you have a significant amount of DPS time on top of having the orange group kited through that location at the moment of impact. The red ooze is fairly simple. It doesn't come with a lot of cheese. It has a three second spawn in, has three seconds to channel. Ideally, you're beating on this thing until it's halfway through finishing that channel. Then it picks a random player. They get a 10 stack debuff and a tether. Every two seconds, it does damage to this player, taking away one of the stacks. Starts off at 18K, whittling its way down to two. It pursues directly toward this person. If it reaches them, it will deal the damage that the tick was going to do to them. At the stack count that they were at, at the moment of contact, to everyone in the raid, multiplied by 50%. Low stacks do not matter, but it is ideal to kite it throughout its whole duration. This does significant damage up front, becoming tame as time passes. Do not let them die when they are picked. Vanishing, fading, cloaking, blocking, all this will cause it to immediately retarget. It is not advisable to do this on the orange ooze as it hampers your melee, forcing them to break off as it retargets. Have I touched on the A-bomb yet? I want to talk about the A-bomb. Let's talk about the A-bomb. Mac, I've been dying to talk about the A-bomb. This beast slaps. I would not be surprised if it is top DPS. On top of it clearing slime puddles and slowing oozes, its main damaging ability applies Sunder Armor! Hey man, can the rogue lift this fight? Nah dude, we got the A-bomb! He's a bruiser in your new best bud, all in one. As long as your A-bomb is on top of keeping the puddles under control, they are going to destroy whatever they touch. They're probably even gonna rip threat off the boss. I cannot overstate how good this is. When possible, position the boss near a puddle so you're a-bomb can double dip. I am riding this thing so hard. A-bomb is love. A-bomb is life. His first transition is at 80%. When he transitions, he will cast Volatile Experiment. You want to push him past his barrier when there is no ooze alive. As this summons two oozes, he will then proceed to his table and do nothing. This will last for about 50 seconds. Everyone in the raid will be afflicted with ooze variable until both the oozes are dead. This makes it so that only half your raid can deal with the green ooze and half the raid can deal with the orange ooze. They will also be the only ones who are targetable by the fixates of oozes of their color. To summarize, stack here, wait fixate, A-bomb slows, Orange kited through stack, zug him down. Is your ooze dead? Zug the boss. And that's transition one. The A-bomb can choose whatever ooze. It doesn't get a variable, but ideally, they are zugging green first. Phase two. Same as phase one, except two new abilities. Malleable goo. This is a ranged criteria mechanic. If there are eight players at range, it'll target one of those eight. If not, it has a chance to go to melee. This will lob an ooze that slowly makes its way toward one of those ranged players, visually bouncing in the direction until it gets there. Upon reaching the point of impact, it does eight yards of damage. However, if you are within five yards of that impact, you will also get a debuff, slowing your attack and casting speed by 250%. Yes, you can get hit by malleable goo and not get the debuff. Melee, be careful when you're kiting the orange because this is the most likely scenario that this is going to affect you. He will cast this roughly every 20 seconds. His second ability is Choking Gas Bomb. Intervals of 35 seconds. Okay, so I spent a good amount of time trying to figure out how gas bombs work, figured it out. Uh, summons a gas bomb anywhere between zero to six yards, left and right, and then there is this added variable of destination. What does destination mean? What off was offset by two radius, what does that mean? So it still pulsates like every one second, it'll still do that thing, trying to apply the debuff to anyone that's within three yards of it. But the kicker is, the confusion that I've been having until I figured this out finally is that it can spawn on the left side, anywhere, zero to six yards, offset by two in a radius. So this one can spawn anywhere here, and this one can spawn anything over here. So you can have two really close together, even on top of each other, potentially, or two really far apart, or anything in between in this area. So this is it. This is this is how gas bombs work. It'll never be behind, it'll never be front, it's a pain in the ass to figure this out when the boss is constantly being jerked around, but yes, this is how it works. When he spawns them, they don't pulsate immediately, so you could be right underneath him as he's spawning them, and then move through him as the tanks move him and not get clipped by it. Strong chance of success, not guaranteeing it, but I've done it so far and it has not hit me. So take that for what you will. Yes, I see it. No, it doesn't exist in this encounter. It has either been omitted from this fight or it is just not a part of the script. There is no choking gas bomb explosion. It despawns eight seconds after it exists.
You can continue on with the fight with the aforementioned till 35%. You will cast Volatile Experiment at the end and begin the second transition. Again, don't push if an ooze is soon. Same thing as transition one, except 35 seconds instead of 50. With ooze is dead or near death. Phase three will begin! Professor Putricide becomes... the white scientist. He has killed the A-bomb to become an A-bomb. We must avenge our fallen brother. I'm just normal! For our fallen Zug! He gets a passive increasing his damage and attack speed significantly. This is absolutely going to hurt. Brace yourself. On his first melee and every 11 seconds after, he will apply a debuff called Mutated Plague to his highest threat target. This is going to be the make or break for your team. Unless you are running three tanks. If you can, start off with a Feral Druid, roid it up with as many defensive cooldowns as you can expense for, for them to take the first two stacks. Then have your main tank take the next two, your off tank take the next two, then your main tank take his third, then your off tank take his third. If you don't kill this guy by the time one of your mans hits four stacks, you're all dead. And it is likely for you to bleed out if three of your tanks have three stacks of the debuff. Yes, you can no longer get rid of the ooze puddles. You can handle that by positioning near the table or just behind the boss throughout the entirety of this fight. You still have to deal with malleable goo and gas bombs. You no longer have to deal with oozes. But this is absolutely... 100% no doubt, a DPS race. Mutated Plague isn't doing damage to the tank. It's replacing what the A-bomb did to an Nth. It's doing damage to the entire raid. And at four stacks, that is broadcasting 20,000 unmitigated damage to everyone in the raid every three seconds. Forgot to mention how it works. It starts off at 750, then it multiplies by three, then it multiplies by three, then it multiplies by three. See what I'm getting at? Multiplicatively, you're going to die. <laughs> so in clutch situations, you can bop somebody who has a taunt so they can take a stack. You really don't want to screw over your DR. The only way for DR to reset is for a little over 20 seconds to pass without a taunt occurring. Factor that in if you're relying on debuff sniping. You can give yourself more time. You can have a fake tank take the first hit, hopped on a cooldown, then have your cat DPS loaded with pain suppression and whatnot, take the next two, and then have your tanks take it if you need more time. But ideally, you just have the Zug. And realistically, the truest answer here is to get as much damage as you can while also dealing with those oozes in the last transition. Deadass, lost the A-bomb. If you are slivers away from getting this without doing that, then you basically already have this fight. If any of your tanks, quote unquote tanks, die with that debuff, he will heal for 2.1 million per stack. Good luck. Avenge A-bomb. It was me! God, I miss that A-bomb. As always. Thank you for watching. Shout out to those who donate plasma. Huge thank you to my Patreon supporters. Eamon, Sean McNabb, and Jordan Craig. Straight up, Mega Chads. An additional thank you to James Hill. He went Giga Chad on me. I put in the options as flavor. Thank you for choosing them. Real shit, thank you guys. I truly appreciate your generosity. Here's how far I am from YouTube becoming a thing. That's gonna be a minute. Like, comment, subscribe. Come. What? Here are the sources and content that I've used. Links to my Twitch and Patreon. Can I get away with this twice? Nudge, nudge. This one took a little longer than I expected, so that's why I say I will see you again soon. TM.